On this episode of Focus, get ready for some tech talk. Can Google Glass change the face of journalism? Well, it's at least changing the faces of these journalism students. Reporter Brittany Garzillo tells us more. Then, for all of the kids at Heart watching, a look at the latest and greatest tech toys about to hit the market. We show you some of the coolest technology in our region and beyond right now on Focus. Focus showcases the people, places, and issues that matter to you. Everybody has a story. These are the stories that uplift and inspire right here in your neighborhood. Focus on what matters. You never know what you're going to see when you tune into Focus. Support for Focus is provided by the people of Air Products feel privileged to bring this programming to you. By supporting education and the arts, Air Products strives to improve the quality of life here in the Lehigh Valley, where we call home. You're safe at home at Luthercrest, a Diacon senior living community in Allentown. Our mission is to offer premier accommodations and services so residents can cultivate a healthy and fulfilling retirement. At Luthercrest, we offer independent living apartments and cottages, personal care, skilled nursing, rehabilitative services, and more. Plus, the Luthercrest team strives to provide each person family-like support. You might say it's like a home run. Luthercrest. News doesn't stop. We cover it 24-7, 365, because that's what our readers demand from us. You need to know what's going on, who's playing by the rules, or who's breaking them, who's winning and who's losing. The full range of the human experience plays out every day in the pages of our newspaper and website. The platform you choose to engage with us is your business. Delivering the news is ours. Thanks for joining us, I'm Lara McHugh. In this episode, we focus on technology. In this region, you can hardly broach this topic without talking about Ben Franklin Technology Partners of Northeastern Pennsylvania. Over the past 30 years, the Tech Ventures Incubator Program at Lehigh University has graduated 55 companies. Together, they have created more than 5,000 jobs and grossed more than $900 million. Let's welcome to the show a Tech Ventures resident, Adam Simon, the president and CEO of Sorora. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so show me your toys. Well, you have. Um, first thing is Sorora, our company is all about brain health assessment, and our key uh, differentiator is moving from subjective clinical impressions, which is the state of the art today, to biosensor-based measurements. And what I'll show you now is this is our clinical prototype biosensor. It goes on like this. It takes a couple of seconds. And in collaboration with Lehigh University Sports Medicine and other groups, we're trying to understand what does a concussed brain look like versus a non-injured brain. Wow. And so with this, it's a fancy EEG or electroencephalography. And if you look on the uh, tablet here, you can see my brain waves, the voltage in the y-axis moving across in time. And with this information, we can help trainers, physicians, and other healthcare providers figure out who has a concussion and should be removed from those activities. And then the other question is, when are they ready to get back in the game or return to play? Is the goal that every sports medic in the future has one of these in their bag? A absolutely. We'd like to make this technology very approachable. Um, we want to simplify so that we can have training of school nurses. If two fourth graders collide on the playground at elementary school, they could go to the school nurse. They could have been trained and certified to collect the data. And the key element here is that the biosensors collect the information, move it to the cloud where it's processed, and then a report's pushed to a physician remotely so that they have the benefit of the biosensor information in order to help make an empowered decision about what is going on in that particular brain that they're looking at. Wow, and you're actually working on an application with Google Glass? Yeah, absolutely. So in addition uh, to, the, to the Android application we showed you there, we have our software running in Glass now. Um, and I won't give a live demo, but if we, you were wearing the headset, I'd be able to see your information in real time as well as other information that would allow me to have a better picture as to what may be going on into another athlete uh, or a, a, a subject's brain. And so that's going to allow doctors, nurses, and other technicians who are using that to actually be able to 
to actually be caring for the patient and seeing that at the same time? A absolutely. So much like an x-ray, when you break yes. a bone, you can't see it, but you put an x-ray on it and it becomes visible. We're trying to use biosensors for the wow. brain to make it what today is invisible, a concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury, and make it visible to reveal those signatures that are indicative of there's been brain damage, you know, we, we need uh, more advanced medical care for you. We've been talking a lot about concussions. Are there other applications as well? Absolutely, yeah. Our first work was done in Alzheimer's disease, uh, looking at what normal aging when it turns into uh, mild cognitive impairment or the slippery slope towards dementia. Uh, we've got positive results there. And an area that I'm very excited, although we're just starting in, is developmental disorders. So something like autism disorder. If we could help parents identify in their nine month or 12 month old infant that they have a meaningful and objective biomarkers of the condition, then they can get the care they need and have a much, much more productive life for the next 50, 60, or 70 years. Fascinating technology being developed right here in Lehigh Valley. Absolutely. We're up at the Tech Ventures uh, building on the mountain campus at Lehigh uh, University. Uh, Lehigh University Sports Medicine with their director Jack Foley is our number one concussion partner. Um, and we're very pleased to be a part of the Ben Franklin Tech Ventures program. They've been outstanding to us, have really supported Sorora, and uh, we're very glad to be uh, in, the, in the Mountain Campus. Thanks for being with us, Adam. Thank you. Well, just down the hill from Ben Franklin Tech Ventures on Lehigh's Mountaintop Campus, a new technology has students on main campus seeing journalism in a whole new way. Google Glass gives a whole new meaning to the first-person point of view, as Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo found out firsthand. Brittany? Thank you, Laura. For years, technology has revolutionized the way we see the world. This year is no different. Sources say a device you may want to keep your eye on is Google Glass. Take a look at how these local students are testing this device inside the classroom. Today, snapping photos, capturing video, and even navigating directions are possible with the simple touch of a button. But soon, having access to the world at your fingertips may be a thing of the past. Okay, Glass. Wow. Take a picture. When it gives Look you that, that little chime sound, that means it's done it. Now, you can see your picture by touching the side and activating the home screen again, and then swipe from back to front really, 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 really slowly. You see what's bringing up there? It's bringing up the picture. Yeah. I can see my photographer. Yeah, you can see the picture there. <laughs> It's because of a new wearable media device called Google Glass, a lensless pair of glasses with a trackpad and small computer screen in the upper right-hand corner of the eye. Among other things, users can take photos, record video, get directions, send messages, and share their experience with a simple voice command. Record a video. Okay, now what this does is it gives you 10 seconds of default video. Okay. If you want to extend it longer than that, go ahead and double tap the side and it'll say it's extended. Extended video, okay. that's right. So this will allow you to shoot video until you double tap the stop. Jeremy Lataw, assistant professor of journalism and communication at Lehigh University, is one of thousands of individuals participating in what's called the Glass Explorer program. Last February, Lataw entered a Twitter contest and pitched his idea to use Glass in the classroom setting. Out of approximately 110,000 applicants, he is one of 8,000 selected to test the device before it's released to the public. They're trying to envision a, a world in which we wear these things all the time and they're chirping at us kind of like our phones are to kind of make our lives better. And in a weird way, they say they're talking about getting technology out of our ways. They're not staring at our phones all the time. We're just kind of glancing up at the screen. Funded through Lehigh University, Latal uses this $1,500 device to offer his students an eye-opening experience into the world of journalism. I wanted to start thinking about stories beyond third person because this glass gives us the ability to tell those types of stories. We haven't really had the technology to, to really really do that before. So this is your website? Yeah, this is the um, Tumblr blog that we use to aggregate the photos that we take using Google Glass. Students wear glass for 24 hours and document their experiences on a blog called 100 Days Through Glass. People would look at the thing on my face and be like, what is that? Like, are you okay? What are you wearing that for? Um, a lot of strangers came up to me and were like, can I try it? Um, can I take a picture? Can you teach me how to do this? It was interesting. The students generally reported a lot of curiosity from their peers, not a lot of paranoia about wearing a camera in public 24 hours. Students also create what Latau calls a glassumentary, a video documentary from first-person point of view. So, Captain, you're one of the first students to ever use glass on Lehigh's campus. 
Uh, yes. One of the most interesting ones for me um, as an aspiring broadcast journalist was to do some interviews with various people. Um, we actually had a rebel freedom fighter from Libya who was a former student come in and I was able to interview him with Glass. Google has yet to release Glass to the public, but when they do, Professor Latah says it could cost a few hundred dollars. It's a hefty price tag, but some say it's a small price to pay for a whole new perspective. All I had to do was say Google Glass, take a picture, and, you know, this is exactly what I saw. The future looks a little less like this and a little more like this. It's not like this scary cyborg, you know, thing. It's, it's basically like having an iPod touch, but on your face. I think to really develop an opinion about it, you have to try it for yourself. Some people really don't like it, and some people are absolutely in love with it. Um, I'm kind of somewhere in between, so I, th I think that you just have to give it a try. When I put this thing in their hands in, in August last year, they were one of, by my count, five journalism classes in the entire United States who had a chance to do this. And that's a really big deal to me. A hands-free device that provides a hands-on approach to journalism and a glimpse into the fascinating future of technology. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzolo reporting. Thanks, Brittany. Our next guest from Ben Franklin Technology Partners is Wayne Bars, Director of Entrepreneurial Services. Wayne, welcome to Focus. Thanks for having us, Laura. In 1983, when Ben Franklin started in the Lehigh Valley, the climate was much, much different. Tell us how this program got started. Well, you're right. I mean, the program got started uh, back in the early 80s there where uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, all of the northeastern states were really beginning to lose a lot of the, uh, the manufacturing industrial jobs. Uh, they were losing them to, to the southern United States and to Mexico. We were facing increased international competition. And uh, Pennsylvania and other states decided to start investing in new technology companies that were beginning to emerge and new, new technologies. And the Ben Franklin program was Pennsylvania's version of that. How does a company get involved with you? Well, after 30 years now and a lot of successes, uh, most people find us by word of mouth, uh, by reputation, um, and certainly uh, you know, the, the kind of work that we do here in the community and opportunities like this to, uh, to talk about what we do, I think, um, People have come to know uh, Ben Franklin as a, as a source for uh, entrepreneurial uh, talent and energy, access to capital, uh, access to, to mentoring, and, and obviously our, our Tech Ventures incubator on, on the mountaintop campus at Lehigh. And so what doors are open when a company gets support from Ben Franklin? Well, often, <clears throat> excuse me, when companies have uh, just found us, um, usually it's just the founders and maybe some friends and family have invested in the company a little bit. Um, what Ben Franklin uh, provides is that first stamp of approval uh, on the company. So the, the founders have to convince us that there's a business plan uh, that has a chance for success and that it's not just some great invention or, or new technology, but there's actually a commercialization plan that, that could be realized. And so what we'll do is uh, vet that company. Uh, we provide access to an enormous network of uh, former entrepreneurs and advisors of all types, attorneys, uh, accountants, uh, regulatory affairs people, et cetera, that are in our network that have worked with us for many years. Uh, and also, uh, perhaps most importantly, is access to capital. Certainly, Ben Franklin can invest in these companies directly, uh, but also we have uh, connections to the venture capital, angel capital community that operate uh, on, the, on the East Coast here. And in my research, I came across a figure that for every dollar spent on these companies, the return is over $3 of investment into the economy. It's true. We, we like to say that um, we're not just helping to create jobs, but we're creating jobs in a profitable way for the state. And so that number that you cite is uh, the result of studies that have been done uh, that are really just measuring the impact of wage taxes that employees at Ben Franklin funded companies are paying to the state. And so that doesn't even begin to measure just the sheer number of jobs that we've helped to create, uh, the, the great um, types of some of the life-saving uh, life companies that, um, you know, th those technologies that, that we're working with that you're going to hear a little bit more about uh, on this show. Um, so that, that number is a, is a great metric to use that measures the impact sort of from our program today. And as you mentioned, we are really exploring biomedical companies in today's show, but they're not the only kind of companies that you serve. What is a good fit for Ben Franklin? What kind of company is a good fit there? We're really looking for companies that are developing what we refer to as proprietary technology. And so um, we're, not, we're not looking for retail-oriented companies or, or more locally 
oriented companies that are really just serving a local population. We're looking for companies that have a potential for a global impact and that are advancing some type of technology and, and it's it's diverse. Um, so while we'll be hearing about life science, we're involved in and have been for 30 years. Software companies used to be called enterprise software. More recently it's cloud-based software, uh, mobile application development, a lot of business to business types of applications in, in our software work. Um, but we're also involved in advanced electronics, advanced materials, um, alternative energy projects. Uh, it's, it's a very diverse, uh, diverse place up on the mountain. Wayne, thank you so much for sharing this great information with our viewers. My pleasure. Well, for many, the love of technology starts to grow as kids. If you've ever seen a toddler swipe his finger across an iPad like a pro, you know that technology, once used by adults only, is now shared by the kids. Reporter Grover Silcox visited this year's Toy Fair at Javits Center in New York City. He's here to show us what he found. Thanks, Laura. Well, Chris, it's time to play with tech toys, the latest and greatest. Where do we start? Well, we're in the Spin Master booth, and our first tech toy is leading the way. So this is Boomer. He's a high-tech dinosaur pet. Uh, Follow-up to Zoomer last year, which won most innovative toy of the year. It's an electronic dinosaur that has moods. It acts like we think a real dinosaur might act, but it's really a rich play experience for kids as they engage with the character. It almost becomes like a dinosaur pet. It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome from Spin Master. You know, Grover, sometimes technology isn't all about the chips or the batteries or the power cords. It's about things you can't see, such as the formulation for this. It's called Kinetic Sand, part of the Wackytivities line from Spin Master. It's real sand. Get your hands in it because you're not going to want to stop. And it's completely moldable, just like a regular thing. Check this out. We've made a little castle there. How about that? But actually, when you're done, you just pick it up and you just push it back wow. and it goes right it's back like into the color and the color is to the beach in your home right exactly without having to be hosed down or dragging yeah. sand across the carpet uh, but it's no also sand. no mess no residue and that, this is a big trend at toy fair but this is really the best one we've seen well and parents are going to love this they're going to love it next up Morning. super Bowl. This is probably one of the highest tech toy companies you're going to see at the Toy Fair. It's called Innovation First. No surprise. It began as a very sophisticated robotics company, and then about seven years ago got into toys with these guys. These are the original hex bugs. They run around like bugs, but you got to check out what's new for this year, a whole new line called Vex Robotics. And you can see these larger versions of them. They range in price from $49.99 to $99.99. It's all about building and playing. This has mechanical programming in it, but then for the really sophisticated kid, the Vex IQ line. Uh, this is the claw bot. You can build all kinds of different robots with it. You can actually program it with your computer with drag and drop programming. Very easy to do. This is great for kids to have a wonderful time exploring, building, and of course, learning about engineering. Now let's see what happens when you combine robots with iPads. This is Ozobot. It's probably one of my favorite tech toys coming out of Toy Fair. These tiny robots are designed to follow different lines. So there's different ways to do it. When you see the flashing lights here, that can actually be programmed, change their behaviors, change how they interact with one another. Now this is just a big, big uh, screen that's done for a demo. This is designed to work with iPad. And not only is it, can you create paths, create programming, there's also a really great strategy game built into it. So this is really about interactivity. It's not just that sort of passive solo play, but it's all about us having a great time playing with the robots. Right. And well, robots are so big now. Well, in this case, they're actually kind of small. <laughs> but yes, there are a lot of robots here at Toy Fair and a lot of ways for kids to interact with them. But what we like most about this kind of robot is it really is that human play. It's not, a, it's the technology supports a human play experience. Right. And these are available? These are coming later this year. These are going to be at $59.99 and uh, pretty awesome. That is. And actually, I understand this is the grid for the Toy Fair. So good luck, uh, Getting out of here. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Chris Byrne, the toy guy, thanks for joining Good us. Good to be with you. Back to you guys from the Toy Fair in New York. Finally tonight, we welcome Mark Dillon of Biomed Sciences to the show. Mark, welcome Hi, to Focus. Laura. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. You make what looks like second skin. Yes, uh, this is a product which we call Silom TSR, which is essentially a, a temporary skin replacement. It's basically an artificial epidermis, show and me it how goes onto a wound. Um, a burn injury, for example, and can be wrapped and put in place, and it mimics the function of skin. And the nice feature about it is that it's non-adherent, so it never sticks more than that to the wound surface. And so when it's removed, eventually, 
uh, as the skin heals in underneath, it doesn't cause any damage just by lifting the dressing off. What are the applications for this? They must we be use so it, numerous. We use it in burn treatment, and we also use it in cosmetic surgery uh, for laser resurfacing procedures uh, to remove wrinkles. Um, and we're developing next generation versions of the technology now that will have broader applications into more general wound care. And it was on my skin. It felt just like you said, like artificial skin, like, like skin. second skin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so because of it has that stretch, is that because it's, as you were telling me, it's made with a combination of silicon and, and Teflon? Teflon, correct. It's a, it's a mixture of silicon and Teflon. And uh, we form that into a, a special type of um, polymer blend. And that's what gives it its, its strength and durability, but s still has the softness and adhesiveness of the silicone. And um, that was a technology that um, I developed as part of the Ben Franklin program. Um, over the course of uh, several years uh, at the incubator site on the mountaintop, and we went through the commercialization and development of manufacturing techniques and regulatory affairs and FDA approval and that whole process and introduced the product into the marketplace in the mid-90s. And since then, we've gone on to expand into other product categories, um, more in the area of treating scars that result from wounds. So this product was used on an open wound, but our other products are used for treating scars that result from wounds. So this is a, a sample of a leave of fabric, and it has the same kind of feel to it, but in this case it has a fabric backing on it. And this would be applied to a scar. After the wound first heals and the scar uh, either is existing or, or uh, we're using this preventatively, and you would take it off once a day, wash it with soap and water and reapply it, and it'll last for four to six weeks or so, and uh, it will actually reduce the appearance of a scar. And um, so we took that basic technology and brought that out into more complex applications, like this product right here is actually a compression garment that a burn patient would wear. And we've made a, a fabric, a textile material, that has our scar management technology built into it. And we provide that to the companies that make the garments. And so they'll actually stitch it right into the garment that the patient wears. Um, and then that will last for months of use and wow. can even be washed in a washing machine and put in a dryer. Um, or another variation is, a rigid thermoplastic splinting material that has our Cylon technology uh, laminated to one side and this would be custom fabricated for a patient with facial burn injuries and in this way we can kind of almost sculpt the skin into the shape that, that, that we want desired result. And you said this product in particular, this is available in drugstores and... It is. Um, all of the major retailers um, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, uh, Walmart. Uh, it's under the brand name Scaraway in those retail outlets, but if you look at the bottom of the box, it says Biomed Sciences, Allentown, PA. And so people may be buying products made in their backyard and not even realizing That's it. correct. And we sell these products. Um, we're in 50 foreign countries or so, so it's, it's a global operation. We sell all around the world. How many employees do you have? Uh, we're about 20 people. So we're still a small company, but uh, we have a, a long reach and um, we focus on burn care and burn treatment. It's a bit of a niche market. It's kind of specialty, uh, but it lends itself well to a small company. And how did Ben Franklin help you get where you are today? Well, there were a lot of different ways that they uh, contributed. There was some financial assistance, but um, as Wayne had mentioned earlier, there was um, kind of a, a credibility that, that came along with being accepted into the Ben Franklin program. Just the fact that we were in the incubator facility that potential investors knew that the that our business plan was reviewed that professors had reviewed our technology that our patents were were reviewed by legal teams just gave a, a, an air of credibility that made it much easier to go out and find the the venture capital that we needed in order to grow the operation and and become a success Mark, thanks for being with us today. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Well, we love using technology to hear from our viewers, so please connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or on our website, WLVT.org. So often when we think of technology, we think of Silicon Valley on the West Coast, but there's so much happening right here in the Lehigh Valley, including seeing students and our, of course, Brittany, using Google Glass. We look so <laughs> silly the first time we use these things. Look silly, but actually so cool. And what's so neat about them is if I was wearing them now, I could take a picture of you and post it immediately to Facebook, Twitter, any sort of social media. 
They are unbelievable. And then the way we use them um, with medicine, as we saw on the show tonight. Right, there's gonna be able to be nurses and doctors both hands triaging the patient and with Google Glass being able to still see brain waves and other information all at the same time. It's it's unbelievable. The Life changing, we're really, it will be. It's true. It's incredible. And of course on the fun side <laughs> of things. Yeah. Someday all of this technology will morph into toys for kids. Because uh, that seems to be where the toy industry is heading. You know, technology is fun, and uh, we learn when we're having fun, and uh, it seems to all come together in, in the technology. It's just fantastic. You looked like you were having fun, Grover. Yeah. I was having toys. fun. <laughs> That's right. You know, because it, it appeals to the kid and everyone. Right, and the kids who are playing with these toys today, maybe fast forward 30 years down the That's road, right. these are the Adam Simons and the Mark Dillons, the Absolutely. inventors of the future. Exactly. So thanks for your reports, guys. We'll Thank be you. off air the next few weeks as PBS 39 does some on-air fundraising. But don't worry, we'll return at the end of March with some great new stories. We'll see you then. In the meantime, remember to focus on what matters. Support for Focus is provided by... The people of Air Products feel privileged to bring this programming to you. By supporting education and the arts, Air Products strives to improve the quality of life here in the Lehigh Valley, where we call home. In 1948, John Walson put an antenna on top of a mountain and ran a cable back to his television store. Cable TV was born. Now, over 60 years later, his vision has changed the way we get our information from super high-speed internet to stunning high-definition television. Service Electric is committed to leading the way in the community with the best coverage of local high school, college, and professional sports and groundbreaking technology in the